We're going to go over a short review on the 7.1 to 7.4 non calculator quiz. All right. So the first thing we want to look at is how would we graph something that would look like that. Y equals log base three of X minus four, or X plus four minus five. Well, the first thing we want to do is convert or into the parent function. So our parent function for this would be y equals log th base three of x. So that's our parent function. That is without any translation. So now we're going to look at the table that would produce this exact logarithm. So we are going to write in exponential form. So we take the three, we go by the y, and we finish with the x. So three to the y power equals x. That helps us develop what the graph is going to be for the parent function. So we have our x value and our y value. When we're working with the exponential, Notice the exponent is a y. That is what we're going to plug our numbers into so we can calculate the x. So we're going to put our negative 1, our 0, and the 1 in for the y value. When we do 0 of any base, you always get the number 1. When you do 1 for any base, you always get the b value. You always get the base when it's raised to the first power. And when you use negative one, you always get the reciprocal of the base. In this case, one over three. So now we're gonna come over There we have our graph. When x is one, y is zero. When x is three, y is one. And when x is just a little bit, when x is one third, we're down here at negative one. Now we could continue that this table, you could try two. And when you do two as your exponent, three squared is the number nine. So you know that when you're out at nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you would be up here somewhere where y is two. That gives you a good understanding of how that's going to look. And then this also continues to curve down. If you plug this into your graphing calculator, it'll look like the graph stops. It'll look more like a square root, but it does in fact keep going down. If you keep zooming in, you'll be able to see that it keeps going down and down and down but it's so vertical that the calculator stops graphing it. Okay, so we have our points. This is the graph y equals log base three of x. So we're gonna translate this graph. We're gonna move every point 
four to the left and five down. I'm gonna put this right on top of my table. Four to the left and five down. One, two, three, I'm sorry, let's see what's going on here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There it is, I put the, my first one in the wrong spot. Then we went four to the left, one, two, three, four, five, so that's correct. And then we went one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. You could even move this one over, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, just to get a good idea of where we're heading when we start to shoot off to the side. So that's the graph log base three of X plus four minus five. So when you move it out there, you know that you're going to have a translation of four to the left, which is going to bring your asymptote four to the left. And you want to be sure to label that. When you're graphing a logarithm, we have vertical asymptotes. The domain, you can look at your graph and you can see the domain is everything greater than negative four. So X is greater than negative four. And your range, it goes down forever and it goes up forever. Your Y values have negatives, your Y values have positives. So it's all real numbers. And for N behavior, when we do the N behavior as X approaches, now we're looking towards the left. How far left does this graph go? Some graphs go forever to the left. This one only gets to negative four or it approaches negative four. When that happens, the Y values are clearly coming down, are going as down as far as you get to negative four. So they keep going down, the closer you get to negative four, goes down forever to negative infinity. As X approaches positive infinity, as we move to the right, there is no limitation. We can go as far to the right as we need to. You can plug in as big of an X into your equation as you want, 10, 100, 1,000. So your Y value, it doesn't go up as quick as your X does, but it is going up forever. There is no limit to how high the Y value can go. So in the range, you say it goes forever, right and left, or uh, it's all real numbers. So that's up and down. The Y value represents it here. Negative Y goes to negative infinity and the positive Y's go to positive infinity. In terms of a translation or even transformations, we translated four units left, five units down. So that's an example of graphing a logarithmic graph that you may do for your non calculator quiz.
Okay, this time we're going to graph an exponential equation. Now we'll want to look at the parent function, which is y equals three to the x power. So that's going to help us make our table. We have x's and we have y's. Now look at your exponent. The exponent is the x. So those are the values we're picking our negative one, zero, one. Whenever we have zero, we get a value of one. Whenever we have one, we get our base. Whenever we have negative one, we get the reciprocal of the base. So we have our graph when x is zero, y was one, when x was one, y was three, when x was negative one, we were up at one third. We get closer and closer to that zero value, but we never hit zero. And the graph curves up. The next spot it would be is when X was two, we'd be up at nine. So this is a graph Y equals three to the X power. Now we're gonna stretch it. To stretch the graph, Multiply all y values by the a value. So our a value is two. So we're going to multiply all of our y's by two. Instead of being up at one third, we're now going to be two thirds. That's twice as big. Instead of being at one, we're gonna be at two because that's twice as big. Instead of being at three, we're gonna be at six. That's twice as big. So you can see that this is steeper. So that's the graph Y equals two three to the X power. Now we're gonna be ready to translate that. We're gonna translate it four units right. Remember, it's always opposite of what that H looks like. Four units right, five units up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So your graph's gonna be there five units up. One, two, three, four, five. So you have this asymptote that's going through here at y equals five. Your equation was two times three to the x minus four plus five. It has a domain. You can plug in any number you want. There is no vertical asymptote. It goes forever left, it goes forever right. So it's all real numbers this time for the domain. The range, the Y values, when you look at the final blue graph, it is just going above Y equals five. So greater than five. As X 
approaches negative infinity, the graph is approaching uh, five. And as X approaches positive infinity, the graph is also approaching positive infinity. And we translated four units right and five units up. Let's take a look at a possible table. Is there like a vertical stretch by two? Nice job, very proud of you. That is great. Yes, we had a translation. We also had a vertical stretch by a factor of two. All right, 10 points for Gryffindor on that one. That was sweet, good work. So we're gonna write an equation for this new table. When X is two, Y is 32. When X is three, Y is 64. When X is four, Y is 128. If we would do a quick plotting of those values, we would see when X was two, we're up here at 32. When X is three, we're up here at 64. When X is four, we're way off the chart. So it is coming down and through. So this is exponential. But what we need to figure out is what is our B value? And what is our A value? That is exponential. So your B value is determined by what number are you multiplying to the right? You might notice that the three is becoming a 60 or a six and the two is becoming a four. So we are multiplying by two. Multiplying by two. So that tells us that our B value is going to be a two. To determine our A value, there's a couple of ways we could do it, but to determine the A value, we can just work back until our exponent for the problem is zero. When the exponent is zero, this becomes a times one. So whatever you have for your y value when x is zero is your a value. So instead of multiplying by two, we are now going to multiply by a half. We're gonna take half of the 32 and we're gonna take half of the 16. And that gives us eight when our X value is zero. And that's our equation. Y equals eight times two to the X. That is not 16 to the X. You need to be sure that you raise your two to your power. So in this case, two to the third power is eight times eight is 64. Two to the second power is four. Four times eight is 32. So it's not 16 to a power, but you have to do order of operations that says do exponents before multiplying. All right, last little bit is how would we evaluate? So if we have log of 
five equals one over 25, what does that evaluate to become? First of all, your base and what you're taking a log of are not in the same format. This is an integer and, or a whole number in this case, this is a fraction. So we need to make them the same. And it's gonna be easier to make the one over 25 into a whole number by thinking 25 to the negative one power. 25 to the negative one power is still one over 25. And then we need the bases to be the same. So if you can turn 25 into the same base, that is your 25. These bases match and you're still multiplying the exponents by negative one. So your final answer is negative two. And that starts to make sense because five squared is 25. With a negative exponent, that's gonna put the 25 into the denominator. All right, good luck on that. Ask me questions if you got them. We could look at another example. If we did something like log uh, four to the 16 X. Okay, we need these bases to be the same. So we have to write the 16 with a base of four, or we have to write the four with a base of 16. Well, it's clearly easier to write the 16 with a base of a four. So now we have four squared. That two still is part of that exponent. And that X is still with the exponents. So now we have our bases the same. So this is where we get two X as our final answer. What if uh, X was like on both numbers, like say it was like also on four? 